Looking back, the signs were as clear as day. You saw it coming, but still, it was hard to believe. They hit hard and they hit fast. Early morning raids, kicking in doors, taking names, nationwide, precise and well planned. And there in a moment, everything was gone. Your plans, everything was just gone. Or was it? Hey, so if we haven't met yet, I'm Blitz, and to be honest, that could be any type of scenario. Natural disasters, government crackdowns, bans, pandemics, whatever the case is, civil unrest, you name it. There are a ton of reasons why you must have redundancy built into your survival strategy. Because listen, you know the age-old survival rules of ones and twos, right? One is none, and two is actually one. They might get some, but they don't have to have everything. They don't get everything. You don't have to lose everything. So I guess the big question would be, how do you stay true to this rule? And the answer is quite simple. A system of caches stored offsite that enable you to survive even if your primary location becomes compromised and you lose everything. So first, let's get a recap of the three types of survival caches. Up first, we have the resupply cache, and this should be stored off-site from your home in that general vicinity, on your evacuation route, or at your bug out location. And here you wanna think about renewable supplies, because you're gonna run through ammo, you're gonna run through food and water, so you wanna have those things in your cache, right? You wanna have stuff maybe like, you know, some fuel supplies and things of that nature. And you know, for me personally, I threw some bullets in there and I threw a knife in there just to have it for good measure. Now, the next cache that we're gonna talk about is the bug out bag cache. And this is gonna be super important to you if for some terrible reason, you are caught unaware or forced out of your primary location and you don't have any gear with you. You can get to this point, you can collect that bag that's hopefully already packed with everything you need and be good to go. And then finally, we have the contraband cache. Let's imagine a situation where the government bans stuff. That could never happen. Or the government taxes stuff. That could never happen either. Or maybe the government or local militias or you know an invading army or whatever tries to force redistribution of supplies because, hey, you have some and that's mean. And so give all your stuff to somebody else, right? It's in that situation where you want to consider the contraband cash. And in this, you want to put stuff like maybe cigarettes, liquor, firearms, ammo, shelf-stable foodstuffs, and things of that nature. Store that away in a safe location and save it for a rainy day that hopefully never happens. So now that we have that covered, let's get into phase two of the caching operation. So we struck out early, early Sunday morning, and I'm telling you guys, this is the prime time to get out and about and do stuff undetected. Nobody's out, everybody's sleeping. And in this case, we were out so early, there was like this blanket of fog in the area that was just like, almost like a cloak of invisibility. And then of course it was dead silent, which I also like appreciate a lot. So about the location. I had put a lot of thought and intention in choosing the right location for this cache because this is a resupply cache and I definitely wanted to meet the criteria of what we just talked about. So not only is this cache located in an area that people don't like hanging out in because you know people are afraid of ghosts, people are superstitious, people don't like thinking about death. Beyond that, this is located on my evacuation route. This graveyard is old you know it dates back uh, you know a couple hundred years ago in some cases and it's just not very well trafficked and then finally there's enough landmarks in this area that make this cache site very easy for me to find or for anybody who is in the know so listen guys whenever you're placing a cache Ideally, you have somebody to watch your six and run security, like what little man is doing right here, because you need to be focused 100% on concealing this, getting it planted, and getting out of the area. So it's very important that this happens fast, it's efficient, and we get out without being seen by anybody. So let's make it happen.
Alright guys, so there you have it. That's in the ground, planted in 10 minutes or less. I feel like, let me check my timer. 14 minutes. So not bad, I was shooting for 15 minutes. You see that I had to, uh, that I had to get that hole a little bit deeper because you definitely don't want somebody accidentally stepping on it and making that sound, right? So I got a few learning lessons uh, with this burial, but I think, uh, I think it's gonna be good to go. And this area looks really quiet and I doubt anybody will come back here. The best hope is that this overgrows a little bit more and um, that's really nice and concealed by the time we come back and get it in three months, which will be three, four, about the beginning of the year. But anyways, I'm gonna get back home, get out of here and um, we'll wrap up the video and I'm gonna share some things that I could have done maybe a little differently with this and how I can make the next burial even more efficient. Let's head back home, shower up, and I'll see you back in the bunker. Okay, so back home and showered up, and I gotta tell you guys, the caching operation went off without a hitch, and the biggest game changer that I saw was being able to set little man out on guard duty. He watched our six, he listened and observed, so that enabled me to focus 100% on placing that cache and concealing the dig site and I didn't have to worry about anything else. And I think that's probably one of the main reasons why we were only on site for about 15 minutes. Go ahead and break down a very condensed after action report. We're gonna talk about what went good, what went bad, and next steps. So, what went good? Well, we were on site for a very short period of time. We made no disturbances on the way in or the way out. So it's not like you can see like a clear cut path to the cache and then a clear cut path out of there. We did a really good job of concealing that path in and out and also concealing the dig site. And then of course, you know, having somebody watch your six and listen and observe, I found that to be crucial and key to a successful digging operation. Now, a few things though did go wrong. I wasted time on site putting the cash into the black bag and then wrapping it up in that camo netting. I should have already had that ready to go. So I don't know how long that wasted, 30 seconds, 60 seconds. It adds up, right? And then the second biggest mistake I made was I didn't think that much intentionally about how low I really wanted to go. At first, I'm like, I'm just gonna store this above surface. And then I thought about it, I'm like, no, 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 no. I feel like a little bit better putting it in ground just a little bit in a shallow burial site because, you know, with Florida, you basically have a big layer of pine needles and then underneath that you have a whole bunch of sand. So digging is actually really quite easy. So if I had to do it again, I would have been more intentional about that thought process and probably put it about two feet down versus about the foot that I put it down. And I just hope that all the rains and the storms we have, you know, like haven't like eroded the dirt from the area and actually exposed the cache. But I do feel good in the fact that I did conceal the site very well. I did bury it down and it's also concealed within that camo netting and that bag. So those are really the only the two big things where I feel like I could have done better. And now let's talk about next steps. So the next step is to return to the cache in about a month and just check on it because you should be checking on these resupply caches. These are short-term caches. And in this case, I plan on retrieving this in about six months. So sometime around the January timeline of 2023, I'll head back to that location, pull the cache, bring it back here, open it up and see what it looks like inside. And hopefully with four layers of sealant, it is completely good to go and I can sit here, I can have a drink of water, I can eat my granola bar, my ammo will be in great shape, my knife won't be rusted and everything will just be beautiful. So what's your take on caching? What are some key things to remember when you're planting a cache? Maybe it's a time that you spend on site. Maybe it's somebody watching your sick so you can focus on that dig 100% or maybe it's something else. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned a few things about caching and redundancy because I know I have because got news for you, this is not my first rodeo. If you wanna see how it went the first time around, you're definitely gonna to wanna to check out this video and this one from a few years back. And one thing before you head out the door, go down there in the description. I have my free bug out bag guide linked up down there. This is a 100% free download. And this will give you all the knowledge that you need to build a bug out bag from scratch into something that is functional and fits your scenario and your situation perfectly, utilizing the five C's of survival. So with that being said, guys, that's all I got. Thanks a lot for the support, and I will see you in the next one.